This city in the heart of Europe is Prague, Czech Republic. Prague relied on trams for the majority of the 19th and 20th centuries. After massive growth in the mid-20th century, it was clear that a new way to transport lots of passengers was needed. The Prague metro system was born in 1974, with the opening of the sea line from Kacherov to Florence. The system got new lines in 1978 and in 1985. Since 1985, new line openings have ground to a halt. However, more lines were and continue to be planned. In the original metro proposal from the late 60s, a fourth line to the south of Prague was proposed, but as of January 2024, almost nothing has happened yet. Join us as we explore the journey of the Prague D metro line, which has been stuck in planning and construction limbo for over 50 years. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. This is the original proposal of the Prague Metro system from 1968. As we can see, there are some elements that don't quite match up with the current system. First, the sea line was planned to lead all the way to Gbeli, whereas today it only goes to Letňany. There are also a few other changes, such as the C line running to Spořilov or the A line running to Liboc. For this video, the two most significant segments of this plan are these. The proposed D line running from the Strašnice district going through the new town, then southbound along the river, finally terminating in the Modrany district. Then, there's this branch of the C line deviating from the full line in Pankrac and running south to Libuš. This branch was the first mention of what would eventually become the currently planned D-Line. The plants moved ahead and in 1970, the proposed network looked like this. The line running along the right bank of the Vltava river is now labeled as a branch of the B-Line, called B2. In this plan, every proposed line has branches. This leads to the city center being a tangled mess of transfer stations between the numerous lines and their branches. In the final plan, Put in motion from 1974 with the opening of the first segment of the sea line, the network was considerably simplified, with all branches being cut in favor of long, single lines. The construction of the network rapidly progressed. In 1978, the first segment of the A line opened from David's Katu Miru. Then, in 1980, feeling the need to connect new, large housing estates popping up on the outskirts of the city, the sea line was extended to Haye, its current terminus. In the same year, the A line was extended eastwards to Želivského. The two lines continued to be extended throughout the 80s, and in 1985, a third line was added to the network. After 1985, focus was placed on extending the already existing lines to the outskirts of the city, where large Soviet-style housing estates sprang up. This was necessary, as development of the tram network was basically non-existent in this period. As you can see on this map, these large districts on the southwest of the city aren't crossed by any tram lines, which are signified by the dark red lines on the map. That meant that the residents of these peripheral districts had to rely on buses or private cars, which were hard to get if you didn't have the right connections during communist times. Just a few years later, in 1989, the communist government fell and the country entered a period of transition to a market economy, full of chaos, financial constraints and corruption. Despite these chaotic times, in 1990, the government approved a new grant plan for Prague's metro system. This plan, slated for completion in 2025, would add two new lines, called D and E not to mention over 25 new stations and tens of kilometers of new track. However, due to financial woes and the fact that construction was already underway on other projects, priority was placed on extending the existing A, B and C lines instead of building new ones. In spite of this setback, the D line wasn't completely forgotten and work continued in the background. In 1991, a study was conducted for a segment of the D-Line, from Zálesí to Náměstí Míru. However, we have to note that the route was far from set in stone. Starting in 1993, numerous alternative routes were considered, such as the transfer station with the C-Line being in Kacherov rather than Pankrac. Next, a connection with the A-Line was also considered. The candidate stations were Jiřího Spodibrat, Želivského and Flora. 
Lastly, a connection with the B line was suggested, with the most likely candidate station being Náměstí Republiky. The route wasn't the only thing under discussion. Talks were being held about the rolling stock and technologies used for the line. Cases were made for the D-Line being a light metro or even an underground tram. After 1993, progress on the D-Line stagnated in favor of extending the three existing lines and the D-Line project laid in limbo for almost 10 years. In 2001, more studies were conducted on the viability of the proposed routes. In 2004 and 2005, discussions were held on the type of rolling stock and track for the D-Line. The line was supposed to be a light metro, in contrast to the three existing lines, which are all heavy metros. Segments of the line were also planned to be elevated or to run on the surface. This is also in stark contrast to the three existing lines, almost all of which are completely underground, with very few exceptions. These talks continued through 2006, with the agreed-upon solution being an automated rubber-tired light metro, due to the slopes that the line would need to clear and due to cost-saving measures. From 2007 to 2009, talks were held about the source of funding for the project. The government agreed to fund the line using a public-private partnership, sharing the costs between the government and private investors. A big leap came in the years 2010 and 2011. In those years, the final form of the line was decided. The line is designed to be a heavy metro, with the same tunnel diameter and platform dimensions as the three existing lines. The final agreed-upon route is this, leading from Náměstí Míru on the A-line, to Pankrác on the C-line, and then continuing south, terminating in the district of Písnice. However, not long after this plan was approved, political bickering almost completely derailed this project. The ruling center-right conservative ODS party and the mayor Bohuslav Soboda said that there wasn't enough money for a new metro line and that the plan should be cancelled. They claimed that the construction of an extension of the A-line and the Blanca tunnel, which was an underground freeway system, drained the city finances and that there was no more money left for a new metro line. Intense negotiations followed, which resulted in a few cost-saving changes. First, the construction would be split into two segments. The first segment to be built would be from Pankrác to Písnice, and then the connection between Pankrác and Náměstí Míru would be completed at a later date. Second, the purchase of new, automated trains was supposed to be cancelled in favor of using the same trains that currently run on the sea line. This plan was approved by the city government in 2013. In 2015, the city government decided that the D-Line would get new, automated trains after all. Of course, the ODS party didn't like that and protested the increased cost. They called the project megalomaniac too expensive and impossible. The fact that their beloved Blanca Tunnel and underground freeway system faced a massive cost overrun and 8 years of delays didn't seem to bother them very much, because cars are obviously superior to public transportation. Plans moved ahead and construction was slated to begin in 2018. Construction of the new line didn't begin in 2018, but rather in 2022. This was due to multiple reasons. There's something you have to know about construction in the Czech Republic. Getting a construction permit in this country, especially for projects of this scale, is extremely difficult. In the World Bank's ESO Doing Business Index, specifically, the Dealing with Construction Permits section, the Czech Republic ranks 157th out of 186. It is easier to build stuff in Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of the Congo than here. There are multiple reasons behind why getting a construction permit is so difficult in this country. First, launching complaints is trivially easy. Almost anyone determined enough can obstruct a construction project for years. Second, bureaucracy is way too complicated. Getting all the numerous stamps and approval takes way too long. Third, and most relevant for large construction projects like a new metro line, securing the required property takes an extremely long time. For a sense of just how slow the process is, the public transport company started buying up the required properties in 2015. About 800 properties are planned to be eventually acquired. In January 2016, only 10 properties out of the 800 required were successfully purchased. After numerous complaints, 
property acquisitions and obstruction attempts, the first segment of the D-line, from Pankrac to Nové Dvory, received a construction permit in 2022. In the same year, the first two stations, Olbrachtova and Pankrac, began construction. In 2023, the first tunnels were completed, leading between the future Olbrachtova and Pankrac stations. This is where the project stands today, as of January 2024. This is the current D-Line plan, leading from Náměstí Míru to Písnice. The only segment currently under construction is between the stations of Olbrachtova and Pankrac, with a completed tunnel and stations under construction. A second segment of the line, leading from Olbrachtova to Nové Dvory, was supposed to start construction in the near future, but just a few weeks ago, the Czech Office for the Protection of Market Competition cancelled the contract between the government and Subterra, the company contracted for the project. The reason for the cancellation of the contract is supposed corruption, where the city refused a cheaper offer in favor of a more expensive one. The city claims that the lower offer was suspiciously low and that their documentation was incomplete. As of January 2024, it is unclear how this situation will play out. According to the original plan, the line should be completed and opened in 2029, but to be completely honest with you, I don't think that this will happen. We will just have to wait and see. In conclusion, the construction of the D-Metro line in Prague has been plagued by numerous problems, such as regime changes, financial crises, political bickering from car brains, obstruction from various groups, construction permit hell and others. I hope that the line will be built soon and that it'll face the least amount of issues in the future. Thank you for watching to the end, you're a real legend. Sorry if my voice sounded off today, I am recording this while being sick for like the gazillionth time. Please let me know if you enjoyed the video, enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye. After massive growth in the mid- <laughs> After 1985, Focus was placed on extending the already existing lines to the outskirts of the city, where large Soviet-style oh. <coughs> This was necessary, as development of the tram network was basically non-existing in- <coughs> However, we have to note that- <coughs> There's something you've got to know about the- <coughs> A second segment of the line, leading from Olbrachtova to Nové Dvory, was supposed to start construction in the near- <coughs>